Still, TV3 New Day, we're live on social media. You can find us on Facebook at TV3 Ghana and also on DSTV Channel 279. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's time now for our ENT conversation powered by 3 Entertainment. And today we're talking the movie industry, especially Ghana's movie industry. Now, if you even Google the top 10 film industries in the world, don't expect to find Ghana anywhere close. Nowhere. I mean, the arguments that Nollywood now is even the second largest movie industry across the world, making some 6.4 billion US dollars annually um, from movies that they churn out. And so there's a power play between or oh, among Hollywood, Bollywood, and now Nollywood. But you'd expect that for some reason would have had uh, Gollywood, if that still remains the name, as part of the top, um, you know, across the world. Unfortunately, that is not the case. When it comes to Africa, by the way, uh, we say that we're number two per reports that have come out. But even that, if you look at how much we're raking in as compared to Nollywood, uh, in terms of just even Anglophone West Africa alone, we're told that Nollywood is making about 11.2 um million thereabouts and so 97 percent of movies that are coming out from west africa are, are movies from nigeria and then the rest we're sharing with kenya and tanzania and so we are making about 600 movies annually and this is a report that came out as of 2021 so what really is the reason we've complained so much about having a stagnated movie industry and yet we have people in the industry who are complaining about whether it's lack of funding lack of interest um, with the players that be within the industry as well and a myriad of other issues and then it comes to nominations and being recognized for the work that we're doing whether it is on netflix amvcas and we see that we have very little representation as compared to nigeria so what is the problem? What are, are they doing right? And what are we not doing right? Joining me in the studios this morning is a man that many of us admire and revere. I mean, uh, the most I remember of him, in fact, is when he was playing Inspector Bidiako. Uh, he's a renowned actor, Mr. Oscar Provencal, joins us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining Good us morning. in the studio. This will be my first time having a conversation with you, I think. I think so, yes. Ah, I'm honored. Thank you for agreeing to do this. And also joining us via Zoom is Peter Sedufia. He's a filmmaker. And I must say, congratulations on that movie, Aloe Vera. I watched and watched and watched, and I enjoyed every bit of it. Good morning, Peter. How are you doing as well? Good morning, Bella. I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you very much. We're hoping that Julieta Santi would join us. In fact, they had agreed... Just a few minutes ago, we were told that there was an emergency and so she may not be able to join us. We'll see if we can still raise her on phone um, to join us. And Mr. Ibrahim Mohenejan joins us again this week. Um, we'll be having a conversation. Of course, we know that it's not just music that he works on. He also works on movies as well. And he has gotten the certificates to the highest level with regards to this. So he has in-depth knowledge about the issue. But Oscar, I'll start off with you. How's the movie industry been for you? I mean, if you look at when you used to do... Inspector Bediako, all the way down to your latest productions. What do you see um, about the industry? Well, if you're relating, and good morning, uh, 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 Peter, and like uh, congratulations also on aloe vera. Um, personally, as an, as an actor, um, I've been on a sort of rebound. Um, I was away for about uh, 14 years because I was working in the corporate sector. Mm. And so since, um, you know, uh, I think about 20, about three years ago, mm. I've done a couple of movies. Yeah. Some are on Netflix, uh, some are doing quite well. Mm -hmm. um, so for me personally, I'm, I'm not really complaining that much. Okay. Um, the, the industry has enormous potential. And I think that the first thing that we do to ourselves is try and put ourselves in a box and start comparing ourselves to Nigeria and comparing mm. ourselves to Bollywood and comparing mm. ourselves to whatever. Look, let's move in our own lane. Let's move in our own trajectory. Let's make sure we get our regulations right. Let's make sure we get our funding, uh, uh, financing uh, sector right for the film industry. Mm. Um, and we'll move accordingly. I mean, Nigeria has, as you've stated, and I've read the, that report. Yeah. Um, Nigeria churns out maybe 5,500 films annually. Yes you know, um, compared to our 600. Now, if you look at the population of Nigeria, it's 250 million versus yeah. 30 million. Lagos State alone is 40 million. Mm -hmm. It's more than the population of the entire Ghana. Why do you want to compare yourselves to, 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 to a country mm -hmm. like that? Mm. I mean, this is not Ghana versus Jolof Mata. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. So we're not, in a, you know, we're not in a race. 
We just need to make sure we put the foundations right so that the opportunities that are there for people who have the love and the passion to be in that value chain of film production have opportunities that the globe offers. Yeah. That's what we need to do. And let's stop fantasizing about competing with Nigeria here and there. On Netflix, Nigeria currently has about 110 films. Yeah. Ghana has about 12, hmm. approximately. I, I could be right or wrong. But look at the comparisons. You've always got to recognize that these disparities are going to be there. But it's not Ghana versus Nigeria football match either. Mm. So this is about industry. This is about employment. This is about wealth creation, job creation for the youth, and, and a whole lot of things come into it. And so for me, I think that when you look at post-COVID, and you must remember that we must put all of this in context, pre-COVID, the industry was on a downturn. It was virtually on its knees. Everybody mm. was complaining about uh, telenovelas on TV and all the stations are showing TV. We know there was a downturn. Mm. And we know the impact that COVID had on the film industry globally. Yeah. Ghana was not an exception. And so we're currently on a rebound. Mm. And so we, we, we must look at it from that perspective and make sure that the lessons that need to be have learned from the past are learned okay. and the right you know rules regulations guidelines and and financing opportunities be laid at you know on on the table um look we keep on crying today as if uh, the industry was 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 never good yeah but that's a lie it was good that was fa that's an absolute fallacy because there's a trend analysis. Mm -hmm. And if you look at back in the day, back in the early 80s, 90s, Ghanaian films were hot. Yeah. People were queuing here. This, is, this used to be Ghana Films Industry yeah. Corporation. They had their film uh, studios here. Mm. People were queuing from here to Black Star, uh, to uh, Jubilee House. To come and watch? Two rows to come and watch Ghanaian films. Wow. Yes. Yes. No, but then, you know, when you also read on that, they say that those films that were produced then were of a higher quality, which is why a lot of us used to want to watch it. Absolutely. It's all about the numbers. Look, if you can produce films, which Nigeria is doing for low quality, and that is why Nigeria is producing the volumes they are doing, 99% mm -hmm. of their films are rubbish. I'm sorry, I have to say that. Mm. How many of them out of the 5,500 have got to Netflix? Mm. 110 have got to Netflix? Look at, look, look, look at the disparity. So let's not assume, and don't forget, back in those days, no producer will bring bad films to Ghana. They bring mm. the best of Nigerian films for Ghanaians to watch. Mm. So let's, 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 let's also understand that we have had opportunities to grow this industry properly but we didn't because of our attitudes and our behavior mm. and our small mindedness regarding films. And I'm sorry, I have to be very, very, very mm. blunt. And I think the producers of back in those days have admitted today that they made mistakes. Okay. They made serious mistakes. Like? Um, for instance, they killed the film industry once in Ghana by bringing in Nigerian films. The Ghanaian producers? Exactly. The same producers who are producing Ghanaian films. When the industry turned down, then they went to Nigeria and mm. started bringing Nigerian films. We told them, and we, when I say we, the Ghana Actors Guild and, and mm. other stakeholders, told them that they would kill the industry. Mm. And they didn't listen because they were interested in profiteering. They're businessmen. They weren't necessarily filmmakers, okay. but they were businessmen who went to film. So they're in there for a profit. I do not fault them for that. That was their business model. But by flooding the system with Ghanaian films, they killed the Ghanaian film industry. Oh, you mean by, okay. And you remember Akia Papo and all those films that came and, and all of that. Before it died down, and you remember, every, every peak has its downturn. Mm -hmm. And when that wasn't working anymore, because what the producers did was introduce regulations that Nigerians, when they come, they should register their films, pay a deposit of $3,000, because at that time, there were a lot of complaints mm. that hotels weren't being paid, artists weren't being paid. So they, they introduced this, uh, you know, unilateral sort of uh, decree, mm -hmm. and which the Nigerians turned down. And because of that, they started banning Ghanaian actors from even acting in Nigeria. I see. 
So then came the collaboration between Ghana and Nigeria. and Nigeria. And then we saw a certain upturn in the film industry because a lot of Nigerian producers were. Coming. So there's a trend analysis. And then before we moved to the glamour films of the Jackie Appears. Yeah. And from there, we moved to where? When that downturned, we moved to Kumasi mm. and was Kumawood. Mm -hmm. So we've had all these opportunities to regularize and improve our film industry. Mm. But the people at the helm of the industry were not interested. The formula was working for them. Uh, they were making their money. So if you uh, invest 1,000 Ghana cities and you can make a movie in two days, three days, mm. and you make your profit, that was their model. And so now COVID has, and you know, the downturn has brought about a situation and the digital age has brought about a situation that now you must produce a certain kind of quality to earn a certain kind of revenue, return, ROI. And if you look at it very carefully, every country normally has a very strong local industry. Which we don't. Which we did. But we've lost it. I'll let you hold on to that. We'll come back to this conversation. And um, Nanama McBrown will also be joining us along with Abraham Mohenijan. But let me go on to Zoom quickly and find out from Peter Sedufia. Because, I mean, you're known for some of your short movies as well, like The Traveler, Master and Three Mates, and then also the likes of KTK, Saiche Gang, and Aloe Vera. All these three movies, I believe, are on Netflix at the moment. Do you agree then um, with Mr. Provencal that to some extent or to a large extent, producers in Ghana contributed to the downturn in the movie industry in Ghana because we're bringing in a lot of these Nigerian movies. Um, good morning again, Bella. Um, I want to say hello to Oscar. Oscar, hello to you. How you doing, my brother? Um, I mean, that, that's, that was a great uh, history of cinema uh, education you've given over there. And um, truth be told, uh, Bella, uh, I think I, I'm, I'm one of the young guys that have uh, joined the the race at where the older generation have uh, gotten it to, and and a lot of things are happening right now that we will we will say it's it, it's in our generation. So we cannot say so much about what has happened in the generation before us because uh, I wasn't there. Someone would say you and I were not there, and so it's really hard to to compare. Maybe 20, 30 years from now I may be able to compare now to maybe the future. But Oscar is in the best position to do that comparison and he's done so eloquently. Uh, for now, what I can say is that the world is changing. Things are, are changing. First, it used to be uh, the, the, the video cassettes, the Pierre Mongo, and then move to the, the VCD and then move to the DVD and things like that. Now, uh, it, 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 it came to even pen drives and things. And now it, it's just strictly on the internet, online. And so things, things are changing. The, 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 the thing is that we need to also adapt and, and be ready for such changing times. That is what uh, we probably were not uh, ready for. We didn't prepare ourselves for And then COVID just hit us and it took us by surprise. Now we're now struggling and trying to hold on to uh, straws, uh, mm. which, which really... Uh, sunk us further down. But if you were already pairing the technology with the traditional ways of doing things and then COVID happened, we would have quickly transitioned to the new way of doing things. But all that said, I think that we, we are still waking up from our slumber and trying to to get get uh, get on course. Of course, I've, I've done four feature films so far since yeah. I started making films in 2016. Mm. And all my four films are on Netflix. I mm -hmm. mean, sometimes people ask me, well, how, did it, how did you do it? But I just keep saying that everyone uh, have um, uh, their investments at stake. They, they have expectations. And so uh, they are not going to build a platform and just say, because they want audience, they are putting anything there. You need yeah. to meet a certain criteria that they've set, a certain quality uh, or a standard that they, they, they set to be able to be there. And so if people have been making film in, in Ghana for so many years and none of their movies is on Netflix and I have made four films and all fall on Netflix, mm -hmm. then the question is, what am I doing differently? Or what, what, what is someone not doing right? Yeah. Those questions are supposed to be asked 
Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm the best filmmaker or anything. No, 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 no. I'm just like an aspiring person trying to fit into the society and also make a difference in my own small way. But we all need to just share ideas, ask questions about. I remember the director of of uh, Big Man Wahala, which Oscar Provincial started. In. He's far older than me. He's been practicing this, but. I remember you called me for a meeting and said, oh, Peter, you were doing something different. I mean, how did you do it? Like, we had a proper uh, lunch meeting and yeah. these questions were asked. And it made you feel like it's not about age. It's just about having conversation to understand how someone is doing it differently and they're okay. excelling. And then we all try to do something similar. And then we can all move as a group and not as an individual. That is where we need to get to. So, Peter, for you, having your movie go onto Netflix, I know that for some of the Nigerian movie producers, like Mo Abudu, sometimes she announces that we've entered a deal with Netflix where they're investing in our movies and that's how come we have our movies on there. For you, what exactly were you doing? Or did you get a deal with Netflix directly where they would invest? Because one of the other major problems in the Ghana movie industry is the issue of funding. And a lot of players within the industry have said that even corporate Ghana sometimes does not want to invest in the movies that you're producing and hoping to film. Yes, um, I, I think for me, when I released my, my trailer for my first movie, KTK, I think KTK from people's mouth, not my own words, I like, mm. was like a uh, fresh of breath air in the cinema space during that time because we are seeing a lot of certain type of movies and so KTK just was a little departure from the, the norm so it drew a lot of attention a lot of talks and so I had a lot of people contacting me from outside Ghana they want to give me a distribution deal and they want to be my distributor they want to be my agents and so now I need to vet all the tall list and decide who I want to to pick so I ended up picking a distributor from South Africa who I have been working with since and so that is how it happened for me mine was like that kind of uh, uh, an opportunity meeting, uh, preparation meeting, an opportunity, and mm. I took it as a lot. Uh, of course, I put in the work before you go there. But really, the truth is that before I did my first film, KTK, I, I pitched the idea, and I keep saying this every time that I pitched the idea to someone with money. Mm -hmm. And he said, Oh, I like the idea. You know what? Call me on Wednesday and, and, and let's talk this. I'm going to invest some money. And when the time came and called the person several times, he never answered. He never answered and never answered mm. until I decided that I'm going to fund this myself. So I ended up funding this film myself with the help of a friend. Okay. And he became a hit before I realized that, oh, this guy could do it. But I did, I don't blame him. You know, I never blamed him because I was just, I completed NAFTA 2015. I did my national service, ended it in 2016. In 2016, I was making my first film. Who was going to invest his money in someone who is just a fresh graduate? Mm. I mean, that's a lot of risk. So I understand where he, he, okay. he, he came from. But I invested in it and, and it worked well. And since then, now I don't even have to struggle to find people to invest in me. It's just a matter of saying, you know what? This is the next project I'm doing. Are you willing to join? You look at my track record, yeah. where my movies have been, how much I've been able to garner in the past movies and know that, okay, this guy looks like someone I can invest my money in because he can get the money back because of his track record in the cinema and even in mm. other distribution platform. And that is what has done the thing for me. People need to be assured as invested that we can make our money back from this particular uh, filmmaker and then they invest in it. Unfortunately, I don't think it's like that in Nigeria. Nigeria, uh, some of my friends there tell me that, oh, you just need an uncle or a friend's uncle to say, oh, okay, it's your friend, okay, bring him to the house. And then it's a chief, chief, and they're throwing some money over there. They give them some credit and they take and it. And that's it, yeah. But sometimes it, it helps. Mm. But Ghana, yeah, you need to convince someone that, please, your money is going to go well and you're going to make money out of it. And that is where we, we are right now. Okay. Well, uh, Nanama McBrown has also joined us on the show. Good morning. Good morning How you doing, Lisa. sweetie? Good morning. Good morning, Papa. I'm back again. You're back again. I know, <laughs> I know. And it's good to have you. And also good morning to Mr. Abraham Mohenijan. It's good to have you. But Nanama, let me come to you because Oscar again mentioned the transition, the trajectory from one stage to the other. And Kumawood, of course, had its moments. Uh, I, I don't know if we can say that it still has its moments because there are people who are saying that Kumawood is also dipping to a large extent. But for you, from where you sit, because you cut across, you're both for uh, Gollywood in totality, and then there's <laughs> Kumawood as well. What would you say um, is the situation like for Kumawood? Is it growing? Has it stagnated with regards to the movie industry in total? Um, Bella, good morning out there, everyone. I think Mr. Um, Inspector Bediakun <laughs> <laughs> said it all. Um, right now, we can't boast of Kuma Wood like before. Now, the people in, in the industry, the Kuma Wood 
ourselves. The mm. actors are now fixing ourselves on short, short videos for mm -hmm. YouTube. You can't boast of like five good producers right now from Kumasi. Everybody is doing other businesses now. Mm. Did we even have that before? If you say you can't boast of five good producers now, can, can we say that we had maybe five good producers five years ago? Honestly, when Kuma Wood was Kuma Wood, mm. we had producers. We had about 50 producers in Kumasi and probably more. Mm. But most of them, <laughs> I was still referred to Mr. Inspector Bidiakon. Most of them were businessmen. Okay. Some were into other businesses. They had a space at the marketing space. And then they decided to switch. Some were mobile phone dealers, some were other, you know. When they came in, they helped. Mm. All of us, we had our share in that. But when I also realized, you see, as a businessman, not a filmmaker, most of them was just looking at the profit. Yeah. And for that matter, we didn't see the the change to come, mm -hmm. the transition that we are seeing right now. Yeah. We didn't see it. Again, we didn't have time for our movies. So it's making it difficult for us right now to switch to the Netflix type mm. or to even our best Kuma would. Why didn't time. we have time? The movie producers are no more. Mm. Do you oh, understand? Okay. The big men in Kumase, they were the ones that were producing and they are no more. So now it has become an individual work. Or oh, I am a star, I have nothing to do. My work is to act. Yeah. My work is to make people happy. What I can do is, I know Mr. Onijan, oh boss, you have the camera. You know me, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Let's go there, let's get some YouTube page. Let's put it there. Because yeah. we, all, we don't want you to die. And right now, that's why we have the likes of the likeys mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. that, maintaining the space for everybody. Would you agree with people who say that Kumau to some extent also lowered the standards that we had in the movie industry in Ghana? Because we were hearing stories like there's never a script. They just narrate, you know, the, the movie idea for you and they say but go and do know, what you can. And mostly, so we're churning out a lot of, mm -hmm. pardon me to say chaff, respectfully. Well, I, I, I will agree with you at a point mm. and I will disagree with you. Okay. However, the Ghana movie industry is not just for Kumawood. Mm. It was a gen, it's for Ghanaians. And like you said, from Accra, and they ended up in being in Kumasi. Look, even the people, the big producers in Accra, they fell down. So all the Kumawood could do is to do what we can do mm -hmm. by telling our own stories. And when the people, likes of Miracle Films started, that man was, was was a filmmaker on the field. He was through Alexi Bold, so he learned the job like I learned from him. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And he had this passion for the industry. So if you can go through the Kuma Wood sector, Miracle Films have enough films, yeah. more than everybody there. And if you look at the beginning of her, his films, you realize that they were of quality, the stories were good, mm -hmm. and the people were ready. It's like we had time. I was the costume for him, so mm. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. We had time to prepare, get costumes done, locations done, and then we go on the set. But I must say, when it became more profitable, mm -hmm. I would say that, a lot of businessmen came in. Now, the people that have the passion couldn't do much because there were a lot of businessmen. I will cont contract Mr. Uh, Provencal to, to shoot a movie with me. Mm -hmm. I know him. When he calls me, I can't say no. And mostly, I, I will probably do it for free. Do you understand? And he wants to impress the man who has given him money. Yeah. So he would do it. Oh, I've been able to shoot the movie in four days, so I've saved you five days, two more days money. Mm. And this is it. And that is, people wanted favors from producers. And that was really happening. You were shooting movies in four days? Oh, really? Three days, four days. Five days. You are but when I whole started, movie. I was shooting movies for three weeks, okay. one month. But it got to a point where shooting for three days, huh? four days, we are done with a movie part one and two. Hey! Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah, see, but, when the crocodile comes out of the water, uh -huh. to say what's happening under the water. You, didn't say it, you should believe it. Part <laughs> <laughs> one and two. Three that was four. even Chewa. I wonder how many days they used. You to know, there's nothing wrong with the parts. Yeah. 
because if the, the storyline is good, the movie is good, mm. you will love to enjoy it more and more. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But we were in a hurry. The producers, the directors, the actors, the crew members, everybody was in a hurry because you want to cut cost. Mm. You call me because I know you are not giving me what I deserve. I will give you, I only have two days. Yeah. I only have three days. And you want to impress the man who has given you the money. So when I said three days and I'm ready, you will also be ready. And this one say he mm. has two days. And then, ba 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 Now you are done. We are done. As an actor, were you not worried for your brand? I was. I was. And if you can see each one for himself, God for us, God yeah. for us all. And that is why you realize that even though they are my people, I love my job. Mm -hmm. I have to help the person and everything. Basically, I love it. Mm -hmm. So I will go there and do it, and I'll go somewhere to, to fix myself. Oh. If you can, Peter said if you had called me for his movie. Yeah. I was so rushing on the set. Ask him. Because you wanted some quality to attach to. Yes. The law. Because I also couldn't deny my people. Yeah. I mean, we all help build it. And if I have to help somebody, I will. But in the end, I went around looking for quality to help my personality. Hmm. Okay. Like you said, I could cut across, yeah. and that's the trick. Abraham, but then this is a, a, a real problem. We and have a problem. Where the, the, the leaders within the industry not realizing some of these problems, and what do they do about it? And I, when I say leaders, I'm talking about someone like you as well, because you, you are literally like a veteran um, in, the, in the movie space. Were you all not aware of these problems, and what were we doing to fix it? Um, the... the Problems in our industry, I believe, started um, when I came here in 93. I think the first project I worked on was with police officer. Yeah. Uh, I edited parts of police officer yeah. for uh, Godwin uh, Cote. God mm. bless his soul. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, I think that every film industry globally has had these problems. If you look back at the beginning of filmmaking, yeah. you know, in the early 1900s, it was haphazard. Bollywood was haphazard at mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, if you look at Nigerian filmmaking and Ghanaian filmmaking, in fact, we actually started off quite well yeah. with I Told You So and those mm -hmm. kind of movies. We actually started off well because there was an, a concerted governmental effort to put a system in place for us to make films. Um, but every film industry is very haphazard at the very beginning. But what tends to happen over time is things are worked out. You have actors' guilds, you have writers' unions, you have you know, creators. Uh, creating singular voices to, to push policy, mm -hmm. that will make the industry stronger. Yeah. This is what happened in Hollywood. You don't need to be an academic to know this. All you've got to do is read a little bit about classical. And unfortunately, in Ghana, this didn't happen. We have had this, Ghanaian media has always been driven by commercial yeah. interests. Look, I'll, let me give you a typical example. Right now, if I was to take off music videos of TV and take off this kind of conversation of TV, how much content mm. do you think would be on television? Yeah. Across the 100 or so channels which are on air, mm -hmm. not a lot. If you skip the channels right now, there's so many conversations like this. Why is this happening? When was the last time you saw a documentary that didn't have a logo of a company that has an interest mm -hmm. in that documentary yeah. slapped on it? Mm. No one is really helping the industry in terms of, oh, this young man needs to go and do this. Let's give him a little bit of funding, let him get it done. We don't even have a system to, to sieve out young talent. Hmm. We don't. You know, what really should happen is that uh, some kind of funding, we come back to funding again, it's made available, small amounts of funding. That saves out young people. You get the real talented people. Showing, you know, when we look at a lot of what you call chaff, yeah. within that, you will see amazing work yeah. from creatives, creative people, and then you can pull them in. But we, we've never had these systems. NFA has never done something like that? It's, it's never been part of the system. I mean, from when I first arrived in this country, um, it was a difficult industry for young people to get involved in. 
as the the level lowered with regards to costs of mm. entry, mm. equipment and things like before, a camera would cost what would be the price of a house. Yeah. Whereas now you can literally buy a camera, your phone, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, would make a film. People have made films on you know on their phones, but there has never been a concerted effort to organize this industry at all, and you can't really blame if you like people like myself. Mm. As uh, everyone has said here, it has always been people's commercial interests. Yeah. It's always been like that. It's never been an issue of we need to grow an industry. And really, uh, in order to put that in place, there needs to be policy and some kind of funding to do that. You mentioned rightly that um, every country has a local film industry. And when you look at it, if you look at South Korea and you look at China, you look at Nigeria, uh, Nigeria's uh, local film industry, if you like, was boasted by private sector. Yeah. Because that is a very rich country. You can never compare Nigeria with Ghana. Mm. That country has four or five times our GDP. So it's not, you can't compare it. But when you look at other countries in the, you know, in the developing world, there are funds that are made available to young students, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people coming out of film school yeah. who can access small amounts of money to make stuff that we can then sit back as people who um, are in a position to give young people a chance to say, yeah. okay, this is good. Come and let's work together. This is good. Come and let's... None of that system has been in place in this country. It's always been everyone for himself, God for us all. Mm -hmm. And this is the situation we find ourselves. But I'll tell you something that's happening. Um, Currently, like I said, the level of entry has lowered quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of young people making content, some of which people might actually think is accidental. Yeah. I'm talking about local content. And they're making stuff that personally, when I sit back and I look at it, I'm thinking, this is amazing because they think they're making a skit. Yeah. But it's actually very clever. And it's fooling people into thinking it's real. Mm. This is something that slowly have you ever seen the Blair Witch Project no I haven't okay this was a film in the 90s no, I, I think haven't. yeah okay. and it's shot with you know like a really rough camera yeah uh, you know and it blew up had a very small budget it was a horror film and I'm seeing a lot of young people gradually using these you know their phones and stuff Eventually, they're making a lot of skits. If mm -hmm. you go on, on social media, on TikTok, on yeah. Likey, on Instagram, they're making, and, and on YouTube, mm -hmm. this is where, you see, the film industry hasn't really died. What it's done, it's, it has transformed itself to fit what is happening. Our industry changed because we had a technology change. Yeah. We had a distribution change. We initially had cinemas. Mm -hmm. And then we had, you know, um, we had DVDs and, mm -hmm. and VCDs and DVDs. And then we had television. Television never really got into, um, into commissioning. Yeah. Very few. I think only TV3 commissioned, mm -hmm. like even right. dramas and all. Very few. Right. Mm. And, and now people have kind of shifted towards making content for online. Yeah. Netflix isn't the only place you can actually make money. Yeah. And a lot of these young people are realizing that. Mm -hmm. There are platforms on it, um, on, online that you can create something. If it's viable, you mm -hmm. can put it there and generate little bits of money. Plus the fact that you can have product placement and all sorts of things in your production. And believe me, there are a horde of young people in this country who have realized this and are doing this right now. So would you say then that the NFA, for example, should now be shifting its attention towards some of these skits that young people are doing and finding ways to even give them some protection? And That is where you identify talent. What the National Film Authority should be doing is pushing government to make some amount of money available to fund these young people mm. who have been identified from these yeah. skits and things and say, hey, come up with something. We have a million CDs that we can split into five or whatever. 200,000, go and make something viable. Mm. And these films, you'd be amazed, could end up at film festivals all over. One of my older guys uh, uh, who was with me at OM made a short film, Heroines. Mm. It's picked up an award, I think the 24-hour film 
okay. um, competition. He picked up the award here. He picked up the award in L.A. Mm. And it's now being sent to Cannes. Wow. And they did it in 24 hours because okay. there was an initiative um, which was launched here to get people to make films within 24 hours. Make okay. it. Right. So it is possible, but they could um, agitate for a bit of funding that's made available to these young people to make not a lot, just a few films that can reach out there. But you see, a lot of these, you know, the issue you're talking about is that, well, maybe we've moved towards some of these kids and stuff and we should focus on them. When you go to some of these other countries and when you look at the top 10 movie industries in the world, from Hollywood to Bollywood to the Chinese film industry, etc., they also do some of these kids and they have them strewn across social media. But they still have movies that they produce and they still have people going into their cinemas to even watch these movies. Recently, Warai, one of our, um, you know, he's the head of ENT News in the company, he showed us a documentary of the devastating state of one of our cinemas. That used to be one of the very popular ones. I think it was Roxy Cinema. It was in a very bad state. And we always only rely on, let's say, Silverbed or we go to uh, West Hills, uh, Westfield Mall. I think that's West Hills. That's West what it's Hills. called to go and watch movies. But we have some of these places. We never really maintain them. And so even if we have movies, actors are complaining that the Silverbed is too small for us to do a premiere. But we are left with no other choice than to go there. So beyond just moving away from, you know, doing full movies to short skits, there are countries who are still producing movies and they have a cinema life there as well and a culture like that where people go there all the time absolutely and i think abraham um, basically hit the, the the nail on the head you see because we tend to generalize or have a perception that film is only about movies and uh, it's not um as he's saying the skits that you see uh five minute 15 seconds skits and you mm. know and all of that all of that content yeah that you see on the digital space it's about film. Yeah. And if you look at, we don't even talk about docudramas, we don't talk about infomercials. Mm -hmm. and there's a whole space that is there. So sometimes I think even we, the filmmakers, have put ourselves in a box. When you go outside, you'll find out that the different genres of films are there. Yeah. What are we doing? We're only doing domesticated films and husband beats wife, mm. this one robber, this, this. That's what we are doing cheating or husband, this and that. We're not doing horror genres. We're not doing real comedy genres. We're not doing sci uh, action, sci-fi. We've mm. got all of this. And to tap it all is that you have a vibrant youth population in this country. We're not, we're not catering to preteens. Look at all the children mm. in this country. Nobody has done any film for children, let alone for teenagers. What we have are films made by people parading themselves to be men when they look and sound like boys. Mm -hmm. so, so, Hold on to this thought, please. We'll have to take a quick <laughs> break. We need to expatiate on this point that Oscar Provencal has made. And I'll let you come in shortly. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. And the conversation continues. Good morning to you once again, if you've been tuned in since Jump. But um, if you just tuned in as well, this is TV3 New Day. We're talking about the movie industry, and I have, I have greats in the studio and on Zoom as well um, having the conversation. And earlier, um, Mr. Oscar Provencal was talking about something very important. You said that there are people who are doing movies um, as, boy, as, as men when they're actually boys. Well, well, I want you to... I, I'm, I'm saying this because, look, even yesterday, I don't know if you watched this series on Netflix, um, uh, Pablo. Mm. Not yet. Mm. Pablo. Mm -hmm. And you watch Pablo. And when the army generals and politicians are coming out, they're in their 50s and 60s. Yeah. You can see that they are seasoned. But here you go and take 25-year-old boy and say that he's a general. It doesn't work like no, that. No, they color their hair a bit. So, so there's a certain level of authenticity and realism that we must achieve. And if you look at the Nigerian films, they have much more, let's say, my age mm -hmm. of actors, yeah. and it reflects in their films yeah. than we do. Mm. You know, so there's a certain level of realism that is not there. You know, so if you sound like a boy, you sound like a boy. If you mm. look like a boy, you look like a boy. But you're playing a man's role. It, and you see, these things are important because... 
film is a medium of vision. And what you're telling me is I'm not believing what I'm seeing. Yeah. But we're supposed to believe what we're seeing. It's supposed to take us into that fantasy world mm. or that world where we believe what we're seeing. So if it's not making sense, and if you go put powder on your hair mm -hmm. and, and all kinds of funny, this thing, it doesn't look realistic. Is that happening, but, but though? Because we really, have a lot of veterans. That's not really the conversation. And I wouldn't want, because if I, for me, it's a very trivial okay. aspect of it. Okay. You know, Abe has brought up, I mean, uh, as we're speaking uh, of length, very, very pertinent matters, you know. And, you know, I say we don't have an excuse. For mm. 30 years, after they dissolved or they uh, uh, sold off Ghana film industry, which mm -hmm. was the main regulatory body for film in this country, everything went to the dogs. It was a free for all, mm. no regulation, nothing. Mm -hmm. And of course, technology brought the price for filmmaking to the common man who could now make a film from his phone. Yeah. So, and that, that happened in all countries, trust mm -hmm. me. It mm -hmm. happened in India, it happened in America, everywhere. everywhere. It affected everybody. But today, as of 2017, we have what we call the Film Development and Classification Act 935, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the Film Industry Regulatory Act. So we have an act. Mm -hmm. And then we also have what we call the National Film Authority, yeah. which comes out of that act to operationalize it. Mm -hmm. It's been there for how long? So what we're saying is, we should stop pointing to government. Okay. Because government has given us what we wanted after 30 years. Whether we like it or not, it has given it to us. Mm. When we talk about film fund, I wish I could get, to, <laughs> get the film act. There's a funding component, film fund component mm -hmm. in the act, which states the revenue streams for which you get the film funding from. Yeah. And it empowers the National Film Authority to, make, to, to, to give charges for services rendered, mm. services that are internally generated revenue. So when you go and submit your film for classification, you charge a fee. But the act is about regulation, and it ought to be an act that looks comprehensively at the whole industry from production all the way through to distribution and marketing yeah. all the way through to um, exhibition and so forth. Mm -hmm. And looking most importantly at those value chains that have monetary, <laughs> you know, and uh, right ownership mm -hmm. aspects, which is copyright issues for all those people within that value chain. It requires a legislative instrument, an ally, mm -hmm. to operationalize all those elements because that is where the details come out. So, yes, it says film production, but at what level of film production? When you come in, must you submit your script? Yeah. To who you should submit your script? At what fee you should submit your script? If you have an exhibition hall, mm. uh, or you're, uh, for instance, if you're a uh, DVD uh, rental, uh, do you have the rights ownership mm. to be able to rent that particular film? Have you sought the right from the owner. Mm -hmm. That is a monetary issue to the right owner yeah. because you're commercializing and renting out his work mm. and benefiting from it, from which he must also receive a royalty for you to be able to do that. So it becomes a copyright right ownership. And even within the film, we the performers or whoever may have an agreement with that particular producer or that uh, that we also have our rights yeah. within there for our royalties. Mm -hmm. So it means that a lot of people are being disenfranchised because films are being rented, films are being shown, and there's and no way for you to track your royalties or the activities of the film. So when we talk about this legislative instrument, which I think the NFA finally, after us nibbling at their backs for God knows how long, and now finding some ways to go about doing it. So I think you I haven't think really been to, impressed with your work. Look, it's not about being impressed. Look, some of us have, I've seen my colleagues die in poverty. Mm. Abject poverty. Mm. Okay? 
sleeping under uh, 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 benches and under... You have no idea how many funerals I have attended. For your colleagues? Over 50 of my colleagues in the past, God knows how long. Abject poverty. So I don't sit here after advocating for the law and fighting for it to take it lightly. Because every moment you waste mm. in not granting somebody the opportunity to maximize his or her rights is a death sentence, literally. Because you have situations where people come on TV and come and beg for 5,000 CDs or 500 CDs or 1,000 CDs. Actors. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Hmm. So I don't take it lightly. So when there's an organization that is there, it must do substantial work. Yeah. Work that is related to ensuring that these safeguards are met for everybody in the value chain. It's not about having conferences and, and webinars. And, it's, just, it's not about Th This that. thing you brought up, did it scare you at one point that you, you might, for want of a better word, make the same mistakes that some of your colleague actors had made, which is why they were broke to the extent of asking? It's a beautiful question. Fortunately, if you're granted the grace and you can see what's going on, like my dear sister, you know how to balance yourself mm. and you know how to add skill sets to yourself that enable you to survive. Because at the end of the day, it's about putting food on the table. It's about a living wage. How do you feed your family? How yeah. do you feed yourself? So would you blame some of these actors for also not balancing themselves and looking I've for other ways? I've beyond the blame game. Okay. Because knowledge, knowledge must be given. Mm. You don't assume that everybody knows what you know right now because there was a time you didn't know how to present. Would I blame you for that? Yeah. So okay. we have to find ways and means in which to empower our stakeholders in the industry, get to the youth, empower them, give them the knowledge of the opportunities that the sector offers, how they should package and manage themselves and brand themselves and so forth. But is that the responsibility of who? Yeah. That's okay. the question. And that's why he mentioned the guilds and the associations, mm -hmm. which should be channels for because that is that is a conduit in which these, you know, um Okay. You know. So there's a lot of work to be done. Mm. And uh on trivialities I'm not really no, not. I'm not interested. Peter, in let me find out from you. I mean beyond getting your royalties, if I may say, from Netflix and the other platforms that you have your movies on. As a Ghanaian filmmaker, are you making any money locally from, you know, royalties here? Uh, thank you. Uh, before that, let me just say hello again to my godfather, Abraham. It's everybody's godfather, actually. You know, we can barely I hear you. I think your sound is a little low. Good morning, Peter. Can you hear me now? Yes. I trained under him briefly at some point, And Nana Macron, hello to you. Uh, she's my uh, godmother as well. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, with regards to royalties, um, I've never received some before. I think that there have been calls on me to register with uh, ASOC and to I've, I've asked for how those things work. Sometimes some of these things come up, but you ask for details uh, of how they work and no one is willing to explain to you. I mean, just like this morning I was told that Juliet Asante was going to be on the show. I thought it was a very good opportunity for the NFA to explain to us some of the Things they went to outline, the other they went to how uh, talk about in Kumase, but she's not here. But that's been one of the issues I keep complaining about that the lack of communication in the in the any field mm -hmm. to the public has also generated a lot of uh, you know rumor mongering. Like, is are they working? Is that what is the any field doing? What? But sometimes they think they are doing something in the background. If you don't communicate it, we don't know. I have a lot of questions to ask. Regarding the thing, uh, the, the 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 information they are passing around, but she's not here to answer to it. I I I want to know how some of these things work. How they are going to help us? Because I don't receive any royalty as it stands right now. Hmm. Uh, people just call me and say some TV channel is showing your movie, and I know I don't have, I've not granted them the rights to show it. How yeah. they got the film? I don't even know. Some of them pirated from Netflix or Amazon Prime, and they just show it without getting. Uh, permission from from the owners and so all these things are happening so you ask yourself who is checking that these things are not done who is regulating uh the, the these these tv stations to make sure that they are showing 
uh, uh, movies that they only have license to show. And so some of these things also affect the, the revenues we generate as, as filmmakers because, of course, if TV3 finds out that a TV station in Ghana is showing my film for free, they would need want to also pay for it to show it because it's already been consumed. Yeah. And so you want to pro protect the integrity of your film so that it can have its value for, for better uh, negotiation. But the system has, has, has no direction as, as it mm. stands right now. We are hoping that NFA will we'll do something with, about it. Clear, uh, 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 direction for okay. Well, my time is running out, so Abraham, I'll come to you shortly. I mean, beyond speaking about all the difficulties that we have, and of course, the fact that we need the act to work, what else can we do to improve upon the movie industry in the country? Locally? Yes. Um, there are some basics. I mean, like I said, you don't really need to go far. There are so many, there are so many countries that have developed their film industries. Um, right now, I mean, even for young people, to just to get, even get a permit to shoot in certain places is an mm. issue. Um, the, the, the lack of regulation, the lack of support is crucial. And this doesn't require a lot of money. It just requires um, an effort on the regulatory bodies that are in place to make it easier. You know, government says we're creating an enabling environment for business to grow. Mm. How about creating an enabling environment for the film industry to grow? Yeah. What are they doing? What are they putting in place? Is somebody going to come out, Minister for Arts and Culture, and say, look, we're not just going to concentrate on tourism, but we are going to uh, also put these things in place to make it easier to do productions or, to, you know, to create it. We have to start at the basics, you know, the things that are needed to get little things done, the chaff, as you mentioned. Mm. Just get it going, okay. right? And then we can weed out, I mean, the rubbish and then hopefully get the real talent and then find ways to support them. There's yeah. so many ways to for young people to get support now. I mean, you don't always have to rely on government. You okay. can, like I said, you can make a small shot by getting product placement mm. and partnering with people and things like that and get your product done. When okay. you get it done, you will get the additional support you need. Well, I mean, beyond just being an actress, we know Nanama McBrown as an all-rounder. And just recently, she joined the Media General family as well. And she's starting her show officially this Sunday. Which is great news. We're looking forward to Onya Showtime. Yes. So we're premiering this Sunday. Yes. Tell us all about it. Well, Bella, I was here when, I mean, you welcomed me. Yes. And once again, I am grateful. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you. What I will say is, in life, you must take every opportunity. I went to Miracle Films as an actor, but I didn't have the chance to act, but I took the chance of being a costume person, mm -hmm. a wardrobe person. And I've graduated to meet people like Mohini Jan, my big brother here, and I learned from everybody. I had the opportunity to host, I mean, being a judge on shows, mm. which I still learn every day, even now. I had the opportunity to host a cooking show, and thanks to Irene, a bean show. Mm -hmm. And then I did my own show, McBrown's Kitchen. Mm. And then I had opportunity from Despite Media to to host united showbiz yeah in life we grow so i want to say a big thank you to everybody who has given me the opportunity and the biggest one to onya right now mm. i am so grateful and happy joining the big family yeah here sunday is going to be amazing mm. i've looked forward for that day i've been talking to the my my manager when am i working when is my show ready? Mm -hmm. When is the studio ready? When, when, when? That has been the word yeah. on my mouth and, I mean, the people out there. So Sunday we have a range and we are ready hey. to give you what you are looking for. Mm. You see, Ghanaians know what they want. Yeah. And as an individual, I mean, as an actor, a personality, they know what they want from you. Mm -hmm. And they know what you can also deliver. So I believe uh, most people are expecting me to deliver. Yeah. 
I am not going to force myself on anything. Mm -hmm. I want to, everybody to enjoy me on Sunday, yeah. enjoy themselves wherever they'll be watching the show from. It's a show to educate, entertain, inform. We okay. advise ourselves. I'm going to have a studio audience. Oh, nice. That we, it's a hand in hand show. Okay. So you're it's doing a everything. Well packaged, everything inside kind of show because I'm for everybody. Mm -hmm. Bella, I'm not a musician. But I do my two by four singing, I know, right? and people are happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't go to the Nafti and the Legon performance mm -hmm. for this acting. But what I do, it makes people so happy. So you don't have any um, Bella, training official Bella. for no, I mean for for movie making or no, for acting. No, 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 no. My first time, I told you I was deported from America. I, I thought maybe along the line. <laughs> I was deported. <laughs> So I when I came, the, I, the mind was going around trying mm. to figure out what to do. And that I went to Miracle Films and I learned from the man. Thank you, Mr. Samuel Nyamiche. Thank mm. you so much. God bless you. You're naturally blessed. So it's a, I, I'm one that I learned from the street, in the market, from my boss here, my big brother, even you, everybody. Yeah. As I'm driving, I see people selling on the street. I look at them. I look at what they are doing, why they are selling. And I mean, some people talk to Nana and toy for your mommy. Just you and know what it. And basically, we are the manuscript. So I learned these marketing tricks from mm. all everybody. You know. So all put together has made me who I am today. Yeah. And. Sunday, I'm going to continue what I'm go I'm, I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. I. M well, I mean, I can't go to Turkey to go and bring whatever. You can't do business. No, okay. I don't know how to do business. Mm. When I see the cameras, I see that the whole world is watching, mm -hmm. and all they want at this moment in our lives is to smile, is to make them smile. And that's what you're giving. And that's what I'm giving. What so, time? My show is on Fridays and Sundays. Okay. 7 p.m. Um, till 9. But so, today is Friday. We're not premiering today. Not today. The okay. main premiere is on Sunday. Okay. And after Sunday, the main show takes off on Friday and Sunday. So if I want to be part of the studio audience, I can't just walk in? No. Okay. No. We must also ensure that we are safe. safety measures are up in place. In place. Yes. We must ensure. I'm, it is a live show. Bella. Yeah. I don't know what you are going to say. Mm -hmm. I must know who you are, where you're from. Should you say anything that I cannot control? I know where to find you. I don't want to offend anybody mm. at this point. Neither do I want to dent my image yeah. right now. So it's a hand-in-hand -hand show with Ghanaians. Okay. For that matter, we left a number... I posted it. Yes. Just send your details away. We'll be speaking to you. Okay. And that was not just for the Sunday. If you're not able to m come this Sunday, all the shows, subsequent. the subsequent, mm. especially the Sunday show, have live audience. So okay. you, we are placing, um, I mean, the people that we have. Oh, I see. So there's shows. an opportunity for everybody, for everybody eventually. Everybody. I see. I'm looking for everybody. it. It's called Onya Showtime. Yes. With? With Nana Mama Brown. Ah, with ah, Nana Mama Brown. I can't <laughs> wait. Honestly, we're all waiting with bated breath for this. So congratulations on this one. But I have to ask this one. We have to go now. Okay. But what happens then with Mike Brown's Kitchen? Mike Brown's Kitchen, you know, I used to work with UTV before my United mm -hmm. Showbiz yeah. there. It's my production. Okay. <clears throat> have they stopped showing it? Are those rumors true? <clears throat> Bella. If you have life, you have everything. Are the rumors true? The rumors, well, <laughs> well, you see, I want to move forward. Mm. So would you, what happens to it? Because you're still producing. My ground's kitchen has the life. When it comes to the cooking show in Ghana, mm. it is Mac Brown's kitchen. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. And it's not dying. Yeah. Do you understand? I'm at a place that I've been welcomed. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to cry if my show is not shown? So you bring it here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, on my ground. <laughs> I, I, I want to do the right thing. Of course. I pay for my show at UTV. Mm. It's not free. Okay. I pay for it. They consider me too sometimes when I'm w not well. They do some repetition for mm -hmm. me. You see, that's the bond when you're working with people. But automatically, I have a contract that I pay. Okay. Do you understand? So if the owner or the producers or the airtime is 
I mean, if they don't want to give it to me again, or that I don't know the sure problem it. as it now, so I, that's why I don't want to no offend. Problem. But you'll reach out and try and fix out I that. I have. Part. And they haven't We responded. are trying to sort some things there. Okay. Look, UTV is my home, but when it comes to work, I am different. Mm. I have a personality I'm managing, and that's family. Mm. You see, okay. and like I said, I'm for everybody. This is my family too. Of course. Do you understand? And so, on your showtime, it's coming this Sunday. Live People should just be ready. I'm ready for you. Please be ready for me. We're ready Thank for you, you as so well. Much. Thank you. And please don't miss it this Sunday. We're all watching Onya. You know what? A lot of people are saying that. So for those of us who watch um, Dates Rush, how are we going to manage? Yeah, sure. Oh. Or get two TVs. <laughs> manage it but thank you so much thank and i wish you. we could extend this conversation but i'm really grateful that you all could join us in the studios and we definitely will keep this conversation going to see if um the powers that be make some very important changes on the show you wanted to say something well peter thank you so much for joining us as well um on zoom and we're looking forward to your next production I've been watching. I've watched Kiteke. I enjoyed it. Yes, Saichi Gang. You we must feature, feature right? Me. I know. You when are you casting me for a role? Mm -hmm. Peter. Bella, if you're available, you're already cast. I hear you. I'd like to act with my seniors here. It will be an Anna. <laughs> so I'll play your daughter or your niece or your sister. <laughs> Inspector Bediako, thank you so much. I know you also have a production that's currently running yes, um, yes, on, yes. on TV as well. Yes, yes, yes. Fortunately, Big Man Wahala. Yes. Got onto Netflix. Um, Great. It's on Qatar Airlines. Ooh. Um, Terminus and uh, the I agency. I think Terminus is currently in the UAE. Okay. Um, cinemas in the UAE and and so yeah, small small. Um, we're getting there. We're, 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 we're getting there. But right. we want it to be a collective thing. It's not a, a personal, individual glory mm. kind of thing. We want to bring everybody along. along. And uh, those who are in authority should begin to understand that we've given them a grace period. Now the gloves are off. Mm. They'll have to work. 